talk about the, the pruning of this golden delicious tree on seedling. And our objectives are to increase the production of this tree and to try and reduce the height of the tree so that we can have more of the crop closer to the ground. And that will make the tree easier for us to do the work on it, to thin it, to pick it and to prune it. So we are looking to how we might renovate or, or transform this tree over time. Now, this tree is already pruned, uh, so, so we don't, so our hands are tied a little bit, but we need to think about the options for this tree. So we could either say we want to keep it as a single leader, but that makes it quite tall. It might be, what, uh, five or six metres six, tall? Six and a half. Six and a half metres tall. So if we keep it as a single leader, this being the, the <coughs> natural single leader, we have a tree that is, let's say, six metres tall. So that is tall and a long way up for us to do the work on. If we were to keep it as a single leader, then we would be looking to remove some of the upright branches that are competing with the leader. But we also look here and we see we have no branches at all down this side because of the shading that has occurred from these branches here. So the other option would be to say, let's allow this tree to be a multi-leader and remove this, the leader, the single leader out of it, either here or here. So before I decide what to do, I'll, I will talk to the boss and ask him if, if he has a preference. No problem? Okay. Okay, so, well, I think that I, I will, because my main objective is to reduce the height of the tree <coughs> without reducing its production this year. So I'm going to remove the the, the single leader and make it a multi-leader tree. Um, oh, I don't, oh, yeah, would you mind? Okay, so we've got uh, Mr. David who's going to going to do the cuts for us. That, this is all might be better. Okay. So yeah, if you can cut it there. So maybe you can do a cut above. So, so to, to do this, we know, we know with the weight of the branch above, it's hard to make a nice clean cut. So the first cut... That's where we're keeping? Yep. So first we just want to remove the branch, and then when the weight of the branch is gone, then we can do a nice clean cut and paint that cut to protect it from disease. Watch out. This is modified. That's fine. Firewood. Yep, firewood. Mm -hmm. Stay there. And then you can take that one out. Yep. yep. That's fine. And let's, let's, so we wanted to open up the tree and over time we will develop more fruiting wood throughout the whole tree. At the moment we have almost no production coming from the lower centre part of this tree. And so the final decision to make is with this branch here. This branch is, is quite strong and it doesn't have very much fruit in it. The decision to make is either to remove it there or if we're feeling a bit bolder than that, and I think we are, David, we'll take it out down here.
So we, we think and we hope that while we have removed quite a lot of timber, thank you, we haven't removed too much fruit. Now, of course, the, the issue here, as I said before, is that this tree has already had a lot of detailed pruning on it, and we can't change that, it's already done. But maybe I can just illustrate the other thing, the other major difference in the approach we would take. This is a branch from an unpruned tree. And if we imagine that this branch was here, instead of the heading which has made this branch upright, if we had what we would like to see in this tree over time is that all of our branches would look like this. So we would have one here, one here, one here, one there, one there. In branches like this, we would really want to make, we have a simple choice. First of all, do we keep it or do we remove it, in or out? And do we need to do any detail pruning on it? And in this case, all we might do, we almost could leave this alone because we will develop buds on this and because it is weak and balanced, even these branches could come down with a, a, weight, a fruit on the terminal bud to bring it down and become a more fruitful spur, something like this. But if we, the maximum amount of pruning we would do on this would be one cut there and maybe one there because these are, are quite upright. And that would put more light onto the spurs that are along the length of this branch. So, as I said, we can't change the fact that there's a lot of, there's maybe, I don't know, 20 heading cuts here that's already done. But over a period of two or three years, we could change to having our tree comprised of, of branches like this. So, really that's, in a nutshell, that is, that is our approach. So we're looking to do most of the pruning with three or maybe four large cuts that we would use a saw. And then this type of pruning, we would tend to use loppers, which make the in or out decision easy. And we're cutting timber that's, or branches of, of this size or up to a, no more than maybe three times this size. So if it's more than three times this size, we use a saw. And if it's less than three times this, it's, it's the loppers. And we would do very little, a minimum amount of detail pruning, because any time we make a cut, we get a response of vegetative growth, and we don't want that. Just a comment on protecting the wounds and the question whether they do this? Sure absolutely critical, essential to protect those wounds immediately. The same, we would cut, paint the cut straight away as soon as the cut is made to protect that wound from <coughs> infection. And if there's concern about the sunlight causing damage to the, to the bark, to the trunk, then we might not just want to paint to here, but we might want to paint the major branches in the tree for protection against damage from the sun. We can see no reason why you shouldn't be able to spray paint on sure. using something like an Atsac. Yeah. Just on that south side. Yeah. So that would make it a quick, easy job. Just from the <coughs> south side. Yeah. Where are you from? That's where the sun comes from. And do you get sunburn on the north side? No, it's on the south side. Like that area opposite. So we only need to paint the side that needs protection. I have one question. Sure. The cuts that you have made. Yes. Now this, all these blind eyes, they will also both open. Yes. Over time, where you have sunshine <coughs> and warmth and light, you will get buds developing and growth occurring. Yep. So, so what we're talking about is a, a stage transformation 
over a two or three year period. You know, and some of these calls are, we say, 50-50 calls. I mean, possibly we sh could have made two cuts and not three. Um, if we do too much at once, then we get a, a reaction, a, a response. It's true, it, it becomes very, very difficult. Yes. And we also may need to follow up with some summer pruning to take, if we have too many vegetative water shoots. Yeah, we can remove during summer. Water do, remove them during summer. That's right. And rip them out. Yeah. So we can do further bending also. That's right, we can. And again, you can imagine that this large tree could be treated the same as a, a tree on M9. If the same principles apply. And, well, this, so this branch that came from the tree which is unpruned has naturally bent from the weight of fruit. The fruit does the bending for us for free. So we're happy with that. But there's no reason, again, to speed up the process that we, for example, we could bend a branch like this to speed up the, the development of buds. Although, actually, this, bud, this branch does have good spurs on it. But the good point about bending down is that it takes care of the vigor, it reduces the vigor, and all of the, all of the food, all the <laughs> carbohydrate, now will go into the fruit instead of into growth. And that will settle the whole tree down and allow us to increase the production because all of the carbohydrate, or more of the carbohydrate, is going into the fruit instead of producing shoots. And I guess, so the in or out theory applies, for example, if, if, if we felt that this branch was growing the wrong way inside, we could just remove it completely, if we had enough other, other branches, yeah. So we're trying to prune this tree to achieve an outcome and to do it with less work. And we would hope that over the next two to three years, we could bring the crop, most of the crop down to be easier and to make it possible to do the hand thinning we might need to do to ensure that we have large size fruit, coloured fruit if this was a red variety, and a, a regular crop every year. Maybe that's the story. Yeah. What's the word old spurs? Old spurs? Well, how to prune old spurs? Well, there's, with old spurs, there are two options. The simplest option is the complete removal. The second compromise is we can just shorten them or renew them. So if we have a. How do we renew them? 